Welcome to my talk at the Web Conference 2021. My name is Vivek Powdell. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Stanford University. I'm going to present our work on diversifying personalized ranking using random walks with eraser. This work was done together with Professor Abraham Bernstein at the University of Zurich. I'd like to start by taking you back in time to about 10 years ago when new social networks and online media were being praised as the enablers of democracy and social cohesion. In a matter of few years, something seemed to go wrong. The same technologies were now criticized for increasing polarization and harming the society. Several problems were exposed and questions were asked about the diversity, fairness, and accountability of information served by these systems. In this work, among all these problems, we focus on the diversity of information in personalized recommendations. These personalization systems are widely used in social and information networks. And this issue is important because social scientists have found that high political polarization leads to increase in suspicion and hostility in the society. And as the quality of democracy depends on political participation, it is important to address polarization since it leads to a decrease in political participation. It's also been found that cross-cutting awareness and cross-cutting discussions lead to increased political understanding and participation. What we mean by cross-cutting awareness is exposure to viewpoints from different sides and different perspectives. So given uh, the importance of cross-cutting awareness, the solution seems really simple. We know the political slant of different news outlets and opinion makers. It means we can just mix and recommend information from all these outlets, uh, all these different outlets. This is also how some existing systems work as I'm showing here in this figure. But this approach suffers from a major problem. Let's look at these two articles from the same newspaper, The Telegraph, in the UK. These two articles were shared by people with radically different positions about the Brexit referendum. Uh, this shows that pre-existing labels or known slants are not enough. These positions can change based on the issues and based on specific events, and we need to know them. So our approach consists of three steps. In the first step, we want to figure out the ideological positions for users, elites, and content specific to uh, the political events that we are concerned with. So let's look at how we define users, elites, and content. Here's an example of a tweet. It was shared by a user, and the tweet was originally posted by um, the account which we refer to as the elite. The URL contained in, the, um, in this post is the content uh, here. So this gives rise to two kinds of graphs. One is the user elite endorsement graph, and the second is the user content endorsement graph. And in the end, we want to position all of them on this one dimensional scale, um, like you see here on this uh, figure. Here's, here's an animation to illustrate this point. This is a user content endorsement graph. We want to position, position them on a horizontal line based on how they share content. So based on content endorsement, we want to minimize uh, the distance between uh, similar users. Um, and then we assume that a user and content have similar ideological positions. Uh, and then we want them to have smaller space in this ideological space. So similarly, we can do um, a similar kind of formulation for elite endorsement. And in the end, we can get uh, these ideological positions on this space. We use a joint learning framework uh, using both content and elite endorsement uh, graphs. And in the end, what we can get is uh, we have the similarity scores between different entities like users and content uh, in, our, in our data set. So for specific political events, we gather data sets on three major political events um, in Western Europe and the US. We have for each of them, um, elite endorsement and content endorsement graph based on retweets and URL shares. Let's look at how our method does. Here's, an ex here's the result for the UK data set. As you can see, our method is able to recover ideological positions correctly. Uh, most, most conservative politicians are identified on the right and most labor politicians are identified on the left. 
But during the Brexit referendum, some uh, conservative politicians supported the Remain campaign. And our method is able to identify them correctly, as you can see here in the red rectangles. So this shows that ideological positions can be specific to issues or events. And using pre-existing labels can be unreliable, but our method is able to um, overcome this problem. Here are the results for Germany and the US, and we can also see here, our algorithm is able to correctly identify the ideological positions for the major actors here. So given the ideological positions, uh, we now need a diversification strategy because simply recommending completely different um, content may not work. Randomly mixing content may also not work. So we have some normative goals for diversification. This is what we define and what we'd like our algorithm to do. The first um, and foremost is of course, it should be accurate and it should be diverse. But what does diverse mean? It depends on the context and in some cases, for example, for long tail diversity, um, the users should be exposed to more low degree items. That's our goal. And uh, in our case of political ideology, we define a bridging strategy in which we'd like to expose users uh, to viewpoints from the other side, but that should not be very polarizing or different. And we use what we call bridges, uh, which are essentially weak ties for diversification. So here in this example, let's look at the users inside the circle, um, everybody who's to the opposite side. So to the right, to the left of this user, if the user lies on the right side of the spectrum are bridge, uh, bridges for this user and the content on that side will be promoted. Similarly for this user, the opposite is true and we'll promote content from the other side. So uh, diversification in our case, uh, mathematically, we define it in a, Erase matrix Q, which is defined on the user item graph. And what this matrix defines is it defines which random walks to prefer over the others. And by preferring certain random walks, it modifies the transition probability and changes item scores, such that in case of bridging, uh, we promote items that are either to the left or to the right of the user. In case of long tail, items that have low degrees. And we can define other diversification strategies similarly. So as long as we can define um, some property on the item or user item pairs, we can introduce new diversification strategies. And it is a generalized framework uh, for personalization. So given, uh, given a diversification strategy and ideological score, how does our algorithm actually work? Let's have a look. Our algorithm is called random walks with eraser. It operates on a bipartite graph with M users and N items. Um, the, first, the first step is we do a normal K step random walk on this graph. And these probabilities are specified by the transition, transition matrix. Additionally, we have the erase matrix Q. Um, so first we sample multiple rounds of K step random walks, but at each round, in, at each round, the initial state probabilities are modified based on Q. Here's an example. So in this user item graph, we start uh, the exploration from user four. This is the first step of the random walk. Here's the second step. In the third step, now we get the uh, scores. If we started with a mass of one, we'll end up with these scores on each of the items. And this can be obtained using the transition uh, matrix. Now we have a erase matrix Q, which is defined based on the degree of the items, higher the degree, higher the eraser. So we can also calculate the amount of erase score on each node. Then in the next round, all of this erase mass will be gathered as a new initial state probability. And uh, the transition probabilities will be modified. This process continues. And after M steps, we can calculate the score of item uh, using this formula given here. So we can see that uh, a normal random walk exploration would have given equal uh, score for item one and item two, but our modified exploration reduces the score for high degree nodes and increases the score for low degree nodes. Similarly, we can do for political content diversification. So given this approach, we want to look at how effective we are in learning the ideological positions, which we already had a look at, 
how effective is our algorithm in generating accurate and diverse long tail recommendations? And finally, how accurate and ideologically diverse are the recommendations made by our algorithm? The data sets we use, uh, the first six data sets are from the social network discussions that I just that I presented a while ago. The two other um, data sets are from recommendation systems. We test them for long tail diversity, but I'm not going to discuss them here. Um, and for the baselines, we look at the state of the art recommendations, recommenders uh, found by a recent evaluation study. They include some matrix factorization, some graph based and other algorithms. So the first result uh, I'm showing you here is the range of ideological positions in the top 10 items. And we can see that for all but the smallest data sets, our algorithm RWE bridging, RWE B has the uh, widest ideological range compared to the most competitive uh, baselines. Here's another result on the US RT data set. We are recommending elites to the users. And we see that for the three baselines, most recommendations are polarized, meaning they're to the right or to the left, and very few recommendations are from the middle of the spectrum, whereas our algorithm is able to recommend a lot more items from the middle of the spectrum for both, uh, for all three types of user, those on the left, those on the center, and those on the right. It also shows uh, the ability of our algorithm in diversifying uh, recommendations. So here's one more result uh, showing ideological diversity on the US URL data set. Um, on the, uh, on the x-axis here, um, on the top row, we have the position of the user. And in the bottom row, we have the position of the training items for each user. On the y-axis, we have the average position for the recommended items. So we can see that the most competitive baselines, um, they recommend items from the same quadrant. If the user is in the uh, left leaning position, most articles uh, recommended are also from the left. But uh, our algorithm recommends more items from the upper and lower quadrants to user in the left and right, respectively, and items from the centers to users throughout the spectrum. Uh, we can also see similar result when we look at training position um, compared to the recommended positions. Here's a, a second result. We look at the shift. Uh, by shift, we mean the difference uh, of the position of recommended items to the user's original position or the user's uh, training items position. And we can see here uh, that our algorithm, which is on the rightmost column, has the biggest, has a bigger positive shift for using in the left. You can see the range in the y-axis here and a bigger negative shift for users on the right-hand side. In comparison, the two other algorithms have considerably, considerably less shift for most users and items are concentrated in the user's own quadrant, showing that their recommendations are not diverse. And this is true um, for both cases when you look at uh, either the user position or the training position. Um, finally, we have uh, some measures um, in which we weigh uh, this ideological diversity using the user's position. We want to look at whether our algorithm fulfills two desirable properties for recommendations. The first property implies that for users on the left of the spectrum, a bigger positive shift um, is desirable and similarly a bigger negative uh, for the users on the right. Uh, and also uh, for users with higher absolute positions, the users on the extreme, a wider range of um, recommended, recommended items are desired. So we weigh the uh, recommendations by the user's uh, posi positions. Uh, so in this table, the bottom two rows correspond to accuracy and the top uh, four, five uh, rows correspond to diversity. And UW means weighted by user's position, TW means weighted by the training items position. We also saw the um, different parameterizations for our algorithm. Um, and let's have a look at the results. Um, in this case, lower values for the first four rows are better and higher values for the bottom three rows are better. So when we look at the diversity measures, uh, we find that our algorithm is able to diversify uh, better than all, uh, better than the baselines. And also in terms of accuracy, um, our algorithm is more accurate and the accuracy does not change uh, that much even when we 
change the parameters, although we are able to increase the diversity. So um, in conclusion, um, I presented a probabilistic model to estimate ideological positions. Um, I described a personalized ranking uh, approach based on random walks with eraser using two different diversification strategies. And I saw that our method is, is a general framework for diversifying recommendations. Uh, thank you very much for attending my talk and I'm open to questions and happy to discuss more. Thank you.